Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girl Fanny Lungu. And we are Fanny and Jesse. Today, we're going to react to Dr. Zaki Naik. This is being poor is not a problem. Now, this is kind of controversial, but let's hear what he's going to say. So, that any further ado, let's get it. Being poor is not a problem. If that's not a problem, then give me all your money to me. If being Sir. poor is not. If, if, if being poor is not a problem, I challenge you today to put all your wealth in my name. Will you do it? No. Being poor is a problem. So don't tell this system. Please don't say being poor is not a problem. Because you are rich. Just because you are rich, you are saying being poor is not a problem. I disagree with you. Wait, sister, wait. Let me complete the answer. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Dr. Zaki Naik. Good afternoon, um, Chef Farik Naik. And then other dignitaries recognize. I beat everybody, ah. my fellow students. Okay, so then in the first lecture by um, Chef Farik Naik, he said that um, the Quran, right, is the solution to the problem of humanity. Okay, so I just want to know what the problem of humanity is. Yeah, what the problem of humanity that the Quran is the solution to the problem. That's my question. It's a fair question. Why are you saying? Uh, Do you want for it to answer or me to answer? Sir, anyone? I don't know. Sister, that's the question. That's a very good that question. what is the solution mm -hmm. for humanity that Islam talks about? My son Farik, he gave a full talk. Islam as the solution for alcoholism, Islam as the solution for drug addiction, Islam as the solution for pornography. He mentioned all that. I think you didn't hear his talk. Sir, I did not hear it. Ah, you didn't hear it. Okay. So you don't intend me to repeat his full talk again. So he gave examples how... Okay. Sir, sorry. What's actually the problem of humanity that Quran is the solution? Yes, humanity has many problems. For example, humanity has more number of women than men. If every man marries one woman, there will be yet many women who will be unmarried. <laughs> so Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 3, marry women of a choice in twos, threes or fours. If you can't do justice, marry only one. Okay, sorry sir. Sorry. Let me, uh, let me complete the answer. So, the full answer is in detail. I'm saying in short. Today, there's problem of terrorism. So the Quran gives the solution. Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 32. If anyone kills any other innocent human being, except be for murder or, or for corruption of land, it's as though he has killed the whole of humanity. If any human being, Muslim or non-Muslim, kills any other human being, Muslim or non-Muslim, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, innocent human being, he saved the whole of humanity. There is no scripture in the world, not even the Bible, which has any verse close to this verse of the Quran. Isn't this the solution for terrorism? Yes or no? Okay, sir. Today, the problem of alcoholism. Every year, more than 4 million people die because of alcohol. Quran, in the Bible, the first miracle Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did was converted water into wine. We don't agree with that. We don't believe that Jesus Christ did this miracle. But the Bible says that. In the Quran, Allah says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90, Ya you Allah din amanu, O you believe, enna mal khamru wal maisuru, most certainly intoxicant gambling, wal anzabu wal aslamu. Dedicate of stone, divination of arrows, rich to memory shaitan. These are set in the animal. I print for me that you may prosper. So Quran has the solution. If alcohol, I'm a medical doctor. I can give a talk of one hour, what is the problem with alcoholism? Cirrhosis of liver, lung cancer, uh, liver, pancreas, esophagus cancer, I can go on and on. What is the solution? Prohibit it. So Islam has solution to all the problems. One by one, if I, it will take me 10 hours. So my son pointed out few problems of humanity and gave the solution and told Islam is the solution to the problems of humanity. So if you want to hear the talk again, sister, you can go on the YouTube and type Farik Naik. Is Islam the solution 
for humanity and you'll get the lecture. You can see it again and inshallah you'll be convinced. Okay, sir, please can I say something? Sure. Okay, sir, if um, there's a problem for humanity, now, we are all humans, right? And then, we humans generally are supposed to have just a particular problem that can be applied to everybody. Sorry, sir, can, so, you, can you speak a bit slowly, sister? Okay, sorry. Slowly sir. and loudly. Okay, I said, if we are all humans, right? Yes. Now, humans generally are supposed to have a particular problems that are sent out to everybody. It's mm -hmm. not because that, okay, today she's poor, or maybe she don't have money, me, I'm rich. Being rich or being poor is not a problem, right? Because she's rich and maybe I'm poor. That's not a problem. But what I'm saying is that a problem is supposed to be applied to everybody if it's a problem for humanity. So now, I don't know, I, there's something I want to like point out because I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. Now, for you to have a problem that is applied to everybody, it's supposed to be something that everybody is to partake of it and is universal. So now, like, sin is the problem of everybody on earth. Because we will not tell me that I've not done something wrong or she has not done something wrong. But sin is universal. Poverty is something that everybody, people are rich, people are poor. So it's not universal. But sin is something that is universal to everybody and it applies to everybody. And that what we saw, that, that was what we saw that was... That was what we saw that um, that was what we saw that Christ came to this earth. God came to fulfill on earth. I that heard your question. I heard your question, sister. Yes, sister is saying she is not talking about problems which are only to some people. Like she is rich, she is poor. It is a problem. Isn't she not a human being? It is a problem. It may not be a universal problem. I'll come to a universal problem afterwards. So Islam has solution to universal problem, even to individual problem. That's the beauty of the Quran. Being poor is not a problem. If that's not a problem, then give me all your money to me. If being Sir. poor is not, <laughs> if, if, if being poor is not a problem, I challenge you today to put all your wealth in my name. Will you do it? No. Being poor is a problem. So don't tell this sister. Please don't say being poor is not a problem because you're rich. Just because you're rich, you're saying being poor is not a problem. I disagree with you. Wait, sister, wait. Let me complete the answer. So being poor is a problem. What is the solution? I do agree everyone is not poor. What is the solution? Zakat. Every rich person who has saving of more than Nisab level, <coughs> who has more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% in charity. If every rich person, including you, give 2.5% of their wealth, in charity, poverty will be eradicated from this world. There will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. Now coming to your question. I do agree with you. Poverty is a problem for most of them, but not for everyone. Alcoholism may be a problem for some, not for everyone. I agree with you. You are telling sin is a universal problem. I disagree with you. Every child is born masoom. He is sinless. Every, it is your wrong conception. Show me one verse in the Bible. Does the Bible say you are born with sin? You are saying you are a Christian. Everyone is born. You don't know the Bible. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 18, verse number 20. The soul that sin shall die. The soul that sin shall die. You are talking about the original sin, correct? That Adam and Eve... Adam made the apple. Eve tempted Adam. They ate the apple. And everyone is born sinless. This is your wrong reading of your Bible. What the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel. Sister, I'm quoting from my memory. God-given computer. You can open your Bible if you want. You're a Christian, correct? Yes, I'm a Christian. In practice, I'm more Christian than a Christian than you. In practice, in practice, if Christian means Following the teachings of Jesus Christ, I am more Christian than you. I am coming to your reply. It's mentioned in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 18, verse number 20. The soul that sinned shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither the father shall bear the iniquity of the son. That means the son shall not bear the sin of the father, neither the father shall bear the sin of the son. But if the person turns back, he shall not die. So that means according to the Bible, sin is not inherited. In Islam, every child is born as a masoom, even if he's born to a Christian parent, born to a Hindu parent, born to a Jewish parent, or a Muslim parent, 
that child is sinless. So I disagree with you that sin is the universal problem. After he grows, because the beloved prophet said, and, and if a person is a child, and if he does something in ignorance, the pen is lifted. He is not responsible. He is not. If a small child does something, who is three years old, if he does a mistake, he is not to blame. So in Islam, everyone is not sinless. That is your false teaching of the church. The Bible also says, the soul that sin shall die. But the son does not bear the iniquity of the father. So even your example, that sin is universal, is a wrong example. It goes against the teaching of your Bible. But Islam has a solution even for sin. Islam, if you want to stay away from sin, follow the Quran. Follow the Quran. Quran has the solution to stay away from sin. Sin means anything you do in which you get a punishment. Follow the Quran. The Quran shows you what is good for a human being, what is bad for a human being. Hope that answers the question. Let's give other people a chance. What <coughs> do you think? Trying to navigate and pick what I want to speak about. If we're going to follow the title being poor is not a problem, I think it's a problem. Why are you comfortable being poor in the first place? Um I don't let me just summarize one. I don't think anyone should be comfortable being in a position where you consider yourself to be poor. You don't have to be rich, but don't be comfortable not being able to provide for yourself. And another thing Dr. Zaki Naik said is if every Muslim must contribute 2.5 of whatever gold they have, you understand? So if that's the solution that the Quran has given, why hasn't poverty been eradicated? Why are we still dealing with it? Why are we still speaking about it since the Quran is the solution? My mind is trying to compute the word poor, you know? Like, as in, yes. There's a word poor, but does it who does it refer to? You get it? Because I think it's on the eye of the beholder. They say for example, I can see my when I'm let's say when I'm driving and see people suffering, maybe they live in a muddy house. Is that considered poor? If they're struggling, does does that is it considered as poor? Anyway, when we go to an uh, Oxford dictionary, English whatever it says i don't know what it says can you not be able to afford basic basic needs something like that and basic needs is house shelter clothing and food four things so um there's a family somewhere probably who is having all this despite the fact that they are kind of struggling to get these things but when you go to their house you find them they're really happy and they're con they are actually happy with what they have and if you ask them do you have any problem they will say no do you understand now i think it's because of no they will say yes most likely but most of them they'll they'll feel contented with what they have you know but now it's the idea is to be content saying at least to have a roof on our head but being poor is being poor i know but the thing is don't you think this is a word that has been put out there. Someone might come and look at us and think that we're poor. Do you understand? The ultra rich people out there. Who just comes and say, oh, you guys are poor. Do you understand? So, and I'm here like, uh -huh. what do you mean? Do you understand? I'm okay. Not like I'm poor. I'm, I'm okay. So, I think, um, I don't know. It's something that, I don't know. Just let me know the comment section. <laughs> I think I'm just going too deep. So, now the thing is, I wanted to talk about the Quran is a solution to everything. Yeah, that, that's kind of true, because it's um, according to how Dr. Zaki Naik was mentioning each and everything. If people actually follow what the Quran talks about and the teaching, not just follow blindly. There's some some things that really. I'm not saying that it's a. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a perfect book that has ever been written 
but I'm just saying if people just follow exactly what it says society will kind of change we wouldn't see what we see nowadays things are just going sideways but if everyone was kind of like uh, one way or they are educated or taught or maybe told to at least just follow this path I think we'll be in a better society now um, regarding the uh, where doctor towards the end when dr zakino was talking about rich people if rich people give out is it their two percent or whatever percent of what they have to the poor people the poor people i think the world would have been a better place but again we've seen now and then what normally happens in the society okay there is christianity and there's muslim you'll find that the muslim community they are so united to a point that they will only serve themselves they will only help themselves which is right is correct but in the quran whatever dr zaki was saying does it say that it should help humanity or only just trying to segregate the point of particular people i'm sure probably it talk, talks about humanity you know? it's humanity is a solution for whatever humanity yes. issues are going to but I guess now, you're trying to say Muslims yes. pick more support exactly. not the now, rest now that means again according to what Dr. Zakinaik was saying I'm more Christian than most Christians yes like that. so that means even if if Muslims are if Muslims are real Muslims then they should be able to follow what the Quran says but unfortunately it strengthens their own community and not wanting to close to the other side and try to help the other community also so what does that even mean so it's all by there's some biasness there but we agree yes you know help your own which is good but if the quran talks about help humanity if you're rich and what put that and i know it doesn't only probably talks about muslim it talks about any other rich person in any community but I'm sure it was it was most likely maybe no, targeting. But didn't he specifically say if Muslims? Yes. You understand? Yes. That's why I asked the question. So, so why are we still dealing with whatever issues we're still dealing with? Because we are not all Muslims, most likely. But again, yes. So I think it's going to solve a lot of problems if rich Muslims are not biased towards other or other other probably religion and other communities out there who need help or just helping themselves because time and again we see uh these muslim communities going to muslim communities and trying to help them even when there is maybe another community just maybe next to them they will tend not to probably go there do you understand they'll tend to just go to a particular place where they feel like they belong but they are mo they their target like the way they went to i saw a clip we did a clip where they went yeah. to rwanda is it rwanda or burundi or something they went to a very uh, dinky place like this and they were there to spread the word the name of giving but trying to convert them in the, at the same time you understand which I don't think that's the right way. But again, my point was this. Yeah, so don't take advantage. Just yes. Just because you're giving. Yes, exactly. And they are fond of giving and taking advantage of that situation. Because you are giving you. And you know, when you give a poor poor person, yeah, a poor person will want to accept whatever thing you, you offer them. And they will, you, let's say if I go to a poor person, I tell them, hey, I'm going to give you this hundred dollars, but I want you to, uh, just accept this and then he will think about it it's only accepting no problem i'll do it but anyway yes so at the end of the day practice ubuntu it's not about people from your religion it's about everyone so if we're going to eradicate anything in this world we have to hold hands it doesn't matter where we're coming from it doesn't matter whether we're poor whether we're rich short tall chubby cute whatever it is if you're going to help anyone, make sure you're doing it because you want to, not because people are looking at you. And just 
be a brother's keeper. All I always say this be a brother's keeper, and a brother's keeper is not just someone from the same religion, it's the person next to you, it's that person in the street, it's that person in class. Wherever you go, there's always someone that you have to take care of. It's not a must, but we should have that at the back of our minds. Is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, what you're saying is true. So, um, I don't know, we should just try and help each other. That's the most important thing. If everybody was helping each other, trust me, the world would be a better place. And the only thing that can be in the air and flourishing and putting out positive vibe is love. If we love each other around, trust me, we'll be able to solve each and every problem. Let us know what you guys think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to, to subscribe. And we'll see you in our next reaction video. Deuces.